Assalamualaikum, I'm Arika Aisha. Now we are on case study 3 about Vietnam War. So I chose to question about the impact of media during war of conflict. The Vietnam War on 1955 to 75 was a time of great controversy in the United States. Cold War tensions ran high as the country relentlessly fought against the alleged evils of communism. At the same time, advance in video and audio recording enabled both easier and more news coverage. From 1950 to 1966, the percentage of Americans who owned a television skyrocketed from 9% to 93% as televisions become essential for everyday life. With the proliferations of televisions, new networks strive to have the most exciting, dramatic and attractive stories. They competed for the finest reporters, higher rated equipment and largest number of viewers. To succeed, they had to do something unprecedented on site coverage of the war in Vietnam. For the first time in American history, the news from the front lines was brought straight into the living room. Right next, why was Vietnam called the first television war? During World War II, morale was high. Camera, new, camera crews stayed in non-combat areas to show the happier, more arbit side of war. The story were broadcast as motion pictures show in theaters and the news newscaster share only good news and reported bad news with a cherry disposition. Government censorship over the media influenced this outlook and if the press want access to stories about the war, they had to receive credentials from the military. This ensured that the news did not report anything that the military did not want disclosed to the public. Mm, and big story like the A bomb stayed out of the news until after the war end. The main focus of the media was high moral and support for the war effort. In contrast, the television news network networks had to blicker view of the war in Vietnam. After the Tet Offensive in 1968, which the public saw as a defeat, reports turned unfavorable toward the toward the war effort. The censorship that was in effect during World War II was much more lax by the 1960s. Camera crews were on site almost constantly in combat zones. Journalists wrote day-to-day -day coverage and record their story in the field. This gave American a more realistic glimpse into the into the lives of the of the soldier, and they did not like what they saw. So next is a clip, a YouTube clips about the U.S. first air cavalry clash with North Vietnamese regulars on the central coastal plain of South Vietnam. A battalion of U.S. 1st Air Cavalry clashes with North Vietnamese regulars in the central coastal plain near Bong Son. Heavy and accurate sniper fire, zeroed in by telescopic sights, keeps our forces pinned down and dug in. Supporting fire from airmobile gunships helps to drive off the calm, estimated to number about 150. After the fighting, copters put down to evacuate the wounded. Two Americans were listed as dead. One was a machine gunner, and the second his company commander, who took over the machine gun from his fallen comrade and was killed himself. Thirteen GIs were wounded, four enemy soldiers were counted among the casualties. On April 1, 1968, the day after President Lyndon B. Johnson announced that he would not run for re-elections, he stated that as I sat in my office last evening waiting to speak, I thought of the many times each week when television brings the war into the American home. No one can say exactly what effect those vivid scenes have on American opinion. 
Historians must only guess at the effect that television would have had during earlier conflicts on the future of this nation. During the Korean War, for example, at the time when our forces were pushed back there to prison, of World War II, the Battle of Bulge, or when our men were slugging it out in Europe, or when most of our air force was shot down that day in June 1942 of Australia. Televising the Vietnam War helped to divide a nation that took pride in its ability to unify. The dramatizations of story in the news distorted the public's perceptions of what was actually happened in the field. Since it was visible in their homes, Americans were able to connect and empathize with the soldiers more than ever before. This caused an outcry of public opinions against the war. By seeing the war on television, the anti-war advocates argued that the war was unnecessary and hundreds of thousands of American boys were not dying for a noble cause. In fact, they believed that the United States was involved in a war in which they should not be involved at all. In contrast, the pro-war supporters regard the anti-war march as disloyal to U.S. soldiers. They saw the perils of the battlefield and felt an obligation to support their troops regardless of whether they should be there or not. The disagreements between the pro-war and anti-war advocates caused a partition in the American population that still persists. In addition, the strong public anti-war opinions expressed in the media influenced U.S. policy marker, markers. Americans could see military abuse on television, such as the My Lai Massacre in 1968 which sparked riots in cities and university campus across the nations. This outrage fueled by television coverage ultimately led, led to the decisions to withdraw of U.S. troops in 1973 and end of the U.S. involvement in the war. The My Lai massacres on March 16 on 1968 was an extraordinary murder incident that took place during the Vietnam War and involved a platoon of U.S. Army soldiers led by Lieutenant William Scully. In this incident, hundreds of Vietnamese civilians, mostly women and children, were killed by the American military. There is American helicopters that brought company C soldiers to my life for the assault. An American soldier fires his M16 rifle near Mai Lai on March 16, 1968. Third picture, when this photo ran in life, the caption noted that Haber found the bodies above on a road leading from the village. This image later appeared on the front page of the plane dealer. An officer training candidate looks at pictures made by Ronald L. Hebrew, a former army photographer that appeared in the appeared in November 20, 1969, issue of the Plain Dealer in Cleveland. An American soldier stokes the flames of houses that were burned during the massacre in My Lai on March 16, 1968. The last picture, a group of civilian women and children before being killed by the U.S. Army during the massacre. Failure of America in the Vietnam War can be accredited to the media's portrayal of the conflict, current discussions on American interventions, and what caused the failure can all be linked with the media explosions during the period of critical and investigative journalism, which forced American withdrawal and change in policy making. Within Pollock and Katz's reviews of literature on this subject, they believed that it was in fact the elite within government that argued what the media articulated to the public and the foreign policy was not affected by public opinion. 
previously investigated factors such as the role of the South Vietnamese and American governments and the military strategies employed in the failure of America in Vietnam can all be attributed to the media coverage which surrounded the conflict. So that's all. Thank you for me.